Hi there, I'm Rob Stewart. Northern California is filled with some great road trips, so get ready to hit the road. We're taking you to some of Northern California's best kept secrets. Rob, you're in elephant land now. You got that right. That's mama's baby girl. We'll take you behind the gates of a San Andreas elephant rescue mission making an impact all across the world. Hey, baby. Right there. <laughs> How cute. <laughs> Plus, this is absolutely breathtaking. MacArthur Verney Falls is the premier California state park. Seriously, you be the judge. We'll take you from the top to the bottom of Verney Falls. And later, is it my imagination or do you hear, and I'm not joking, someone going up and down stairs? Occasionally, we hear footsteps. Do you, did, you, did you just hear what I heard? Yeah, I heard what you heard. And wait till you hear the rest of the story from Ione's Preston Castle. It's tales, travels, and tours, and it all starts now. It's Rob on the Road, discovering the stories that capture the unique spirit of Northern California. Here's KVIE's Rob Stewart. Where better to take a road trip than in Northern California? You know, there are some great travel options in this area, and that's one of the best things about living here, the close proximity to so many historic, spectacular, and beautiful places, from the majesty of Muir Woods to the rushing roar of Bernie Falls. Taking you on a road trip today about 65 miles east of Redding in Shasta County to Bernie, California to show you what President Roosevelt called the eighth wonder of the world, Bernie Falls. And we're here with Ranger Andrew Early with the California State Park. So good to see Hi, you, Ranger. Rob. This is absolutely breathtaking. MacArthur Bernie Falls is the premier California State Park. Seriously? Yep, many people. If you embody this California State Park system, you're gonna show one picture, you show Bernie Falls. Fantastic. How far is this drop? The falls are 129 feet high. Uh, the pool is about 20 feet deep. The water is very cold coming out of there. It ranges between 38 and 48 degrees. Why would you tell someone that they should take a road trip and come check this out? MacArthur Bernie Falls is uh, truly a destination park. People that come here love this park and they come here year after year. They bring their family, their friends. Um, they come generation after generation. But part of the beauty of this place is not just the waterfall, but it's the lake. We have a beautiful swim beach. Um, the lake is nine miles long, up to a mile wide. It's called Lake Britain. It's a beautiful place to hang out and spend a week with your family. President Theodore Roosevelt called this the eighth wonder of the world. Seriously? That is reportedly something he said on a campaign stop in 1904 coming through this area. Now, where is all of this water coming from? This water comes from underground springs. Oh, really? When I walked up here and saw this for the first time just a few minutes ago, it, it really took my breath away. You've worked here for 10 years. Does it still take yours away? I liked your reaction. You just said, wow. Well, it's, and that's it's what amazing. You, that's yeah. a lot of people's reaction. I love it, and I never get tired of it. If I go a week on vacation, I miss seeing and hearing the falls, and so I come back and I have to get my falls fixed. Your falls fixed. Well, you know, it's strange. You don't think about anything else while you're here. All the stresses of life go away, <laughs> seriously, and it's just sort of very peaceful. It's a beautiful place, and part of what State Park's whole mission is is to provide a place for people to recreate and to reconnect with their families. Say cheese. And I had to bring you down here just so you could hear the roar of these waterfalls up close. It's a quarter of a mile from the top to the bottom in an easy walk to the very bottom of Bernie Falls. Well, get ready to look up. We're taking you on a road trip today to the majestic Muir Woods, just north of San Francisco, home to the tallest type of living trees on Earth. Well, 
Well, you are in for a treat today because we are here with Ranger Lou Sian here at Muir Woods. Good to see you. Nice to see you, Rob. Thanks for joining us. Conservationist John Muir called this the best tree lovers monument in the world. Do you agree? Oh, I absolutely. It is just the most beautiful place. These are coastal redwoods. How old would you say they are? We think that they, the oldest trees in the forest are about 1,000 to 1,300 years old. Wow. And, but we have also very young trees that came up since last winter. Wow. And how large is Muir Woods? It's about approximately 560 acres. So you have from the smallest to the tallest trees here. And the widest is right down that way, so let's go see it. And here it is. This is that widest tree yes. in all of Muir Woods? Yes. It's 13 and a half feet in diameter at breast height for a very tall forester. <laughs> <laughs> and so how, how tall is the tree, can, can you say? Um, we're not real certain about the heights of trees. We can measure them when they fall down. And you know, Lou, it's very spiritual. Yes, yeah, it definitely is. You have to give it a little time. Um, people come and they get out. They, they're leaving a major metropolitan area. When they really get back to in the back of the canyon, um, all of a sudden they just calm down, and, and then the human voice becomes something foreign. And look at how these are almost in a circle. Yes, this is a called a family circle, and this is how most of the redwoods uh, tend to grow. They call it a family circle. Right, exactly. Uh, the tree in the center is the parent tree, and oh, at yeah. one time, the there were sprouts that grew up around the base, and when that parent tree fell over, it opened up the canopy so that light could reach the forest floor, and those sprouts grew up to be these really tall trees after centuries of time. Like kids, well, exactly, like a family. Exactly. And, and also, you see some that fall, they catch each other. Yes, exactly. Like a family. Well, right, you, there's a lot of things you can learn yeah. from redwood trees. And Ranger Lou, this is one of the cool things you can do. Come inside of the tree and have your picture taken and just be surrounded by this massive redwood. Absolutely, this is one of the few places where people can get really close to the trees. Awesome, well thank you so much for having us here at Muir Woods, north of San Francisco. We're just getting rolling on Rob on the Road. Great road trips, still ahead. Behind us is a barn that dates back to the 1700s from New Hampshire. Yep, and in fact, it was built in 1770, so for before the Declaration of Independence. It's a new spin on a barn raising. Hear how this historic barn got from New England to Napa Valley. Plus, Wanda has suffered all of her life from really chronic foot problems. Go inside a mission that's laying a firm foundation for rescued animals, and later, I cannot believe we're standing this close to wild horses. They never underestimate the power of food. <laughs> and never underestimate the power of love. <laughs> part of him is buried right here. What part? His heart. Oh, wow. How nice. Yes, he's one man who didn't leave his heart in San Francisco. <laughs> Very well put. Northern California is filled with great, easy road trips. And some of the places we want to take you are iconic and eerie, others are alive with history. There is a soaring structure in Ione. It's the Preston Castle here in Amador County. And we're taking you inside for tales and a tour. And we're here outside the Preston Castle with Yvonne Funderburg. Good to see you. Hello, good You're to see you. with the Preston Castle Foundation, which is in the middle of a huge undertaking. Yes. Tell me about that. Well, Preston Castle Foundation is trying to restore this building that was once a school of industry, Preston School of Industry. A reform school for boys, correct? Yes, yes. This is the way the boys would enter when they first came. Not the grand entrance Not from the, the front. Not the grand entrance. Yeah. Although it was military discipline, they really wanted this to be like a family life here. And part of that family life involved a kitchen. The kitchen, this is where they would do the meals for this building. And sometimes you can still smell the cookies she bakes here. Even now? Even now. Are you saying it's haunted? Is it my imagination or do you hear, and I'm not joking, someone going up and down the stairs? Occasionally we hear footsteps. Do you, did, you, did you just hear what I heard? Yeah, I heard what you heard. 
I have to ask you, what is that sound? <laughs> well, we're not really sure. We think it may be a water pipe, but we haven't located it yet. So is there running water here? Outside, on the ground. But not inside? Not inside. All right, we'll move on. Okay. <laughs> Uh, this is or was a water-powered elevator? It is one of the first water-powered elevators in a state building in California. In the whole state. So we're pretty proud of it. This place is filled with beautiful architectural finds. I mean, look up here oh, on the ceiling. the plaster work we have here. You see hotels trying to copy that. And what's back here? We have the infirmary, which at one time was the hospital area. And it's the largest landmark in the whole of Almondor County. Wow. And look at this gorgeous ceiling. Some of the boys would climb up there and carve their initials up here. And that is an important door. That is the door that the wards would leave. They'd get new clothing, they'd exit through this door, and sometimes they wouldn't even have family members there to greet them. Wow. And your restoration efforts are really paying off because... Five years ago, I could look up through the ceiling and see the blue sky, but now we have a new roof and that stops the water damage. Well, it is a California historic landmark, so let's hope your restoration efforts continue. Yes, thank you. All right, thanks, Yvonne. Thank you for showing us today the historic Preston Castle in Ione, California. Have you ever driven down Broadway in Sacramento and wondered what's behind these big black gates at 10th Street? Well, it's the historic city cemetery and inside is a hidden treasure. We're showing it to you today on Rob on the Road. And we're here in the oldest part of the cemetery with Linda Walls, who runs the Volunteer Association. Good to see you, Linda. Good to see you. Thanks for meeting us out here. History really is everywhere here. Yes, history is alive here in the cemetery. This is the oldest municipal cemetery that exists this side of the Mississippi River. Oh, wow. And so this tombstone right over here is the oldest tombstone in the cemetery, correct? Yes, it is. 1850? 1850, hand carved. All of these plots were taken over by volunteers in 1987 because before then the cemetery was falling apart. It was. It was neglected and abandoned and about the only people who came out were Vincent Price film crews. It really? Was very scary and neglected looking. And then look at them now, the plots are stunning and there's an interesting story here. Yes, this is Maria Rupp, one of our better known residents. She owned a saloon back in the Gold Rush era. She was murdered by a jealous suitor. She had turned him down because she had a fiance that lived in San Francisco. He was a doctor. In fact, part of him is buried right here. What part? his heart. Oh wow. When he died many years after Maria, he asked that his body be left to science but his heart be placed next to his love Maria. How nice. Yes, he's one man who didn't leave his heart in San Francisco. <laughs> Very well put. All of these beautiful flowers, your volunteers must stay very busy. Yes, we're just buried. <laughs> You know, but it's not just volunteers that you're looking for to take part in these gardens. This is Sharon here who's maintaining Hamilton Square here. You have a lot of volunteers here. Yes, we do. We have about 120 volunteers. They do a lot of different things. Yes, we do research, we do archive, we do restoration of the cemetery. We also do a lot of fun tours. And this is the highest point in Sacramento. Isn't that bizarre? Yeah, it's approximately 33 feet above sea level. And this is where people, you said, would come during floods and they'd camp out, they'd bring their tents and their cows? Yes, their livestock. Wow. I love historic cemeteries and I love art, and this place combines all of those. Mm -hmm. Yes, it does. Art, that's another very yes. good point. All right, well, Linda, thank you so much. Thank you. It was a pleasure speaking with you today here at the Sacramento Historic City Cemetery. Drive anywhere in California and you'll discover some pretty unique finds really anywhere you go. From a house in Woodland that literally is a trip back in time to a barn in Napa that took quite a road trip of its own. We're in Napa, California at the Nickel and Nickel Winery where we found a historic barn that's actually older than the state of California. How it got from New England to Napa Valley on Rob on the Road. And we're here in the lovely Napa Valley with Director of Winemaking here at Nickel and Nickel, Dirk Hampson. Good to see you, Dirk. Thank you. It's nice to have you here. Thank you for having us out here. And behind us 
is a barn that dates back to the 1700s from New Hampshire? Yep, we ended up bringing this out. It was a barn that was starting to rot away, and in fact, it was built in 1770, so for before the Declaration of Independence, and now has a new life, being the headquarters of our offices for making wine. So this barn was scouted out and found by a na man named Ken Epworth oh, yeah. in Vermont. This one actually came from New Hampshire, but he takes it to his studio, refinishes it in Vermont, and then brought it all the way across country. Mm -hmm. Every single piece was numbered. Once they get all the pieces together on the ground, the whole frame comes up so quickly you can't believe it. You do it because a building of this nature with beams that old, all hand-hewn, you can't really create that now, but we were able to preserve it, so we were helping preserve something of our national heritage. Well, you pulled it off. Thank That's you. That's for sure. Dirk, thank you so much for having us out Appreciate here. Appreciate it. It's great to have you here. Lovely nickel and nickel. We're at a winery, so we better go do some tasting. Better. All right, let's go. We're taking you on a trip back in time today in Woodland to meet a man whose passion is all about the pump. So much so that he turned his own home here into a gas station museum. Let's check it out. I'd like for you to meet Mark Reef here in Woodland. Hi, Mark. Hi, Rob. How are you doing? Good to see you. Owner of Reef's Gas Station Museum, a celebration of everything antique and gas, right? Yeah, pretty much so, yeah. I mean, you see it. I've got it here. I've got pumps, oilers, everything. Uh, you know, just everything from the 50s and everything that I remember growing up as a kid. And it is a walk down memory lane. Oh, for sure, for sure. And the, and the people that come here, they all feel the same way. I've got people that come here of all ages, all age groups and whatnot. When they leave here, they leave with a big smile and memories from the past. One day I bought this pump nine years ago, stood in my living room window and thought this would be cool to have a 50 style gas station out here. And this is what we've got. Mark, what happened here? One of my creations, along with the airplane up on the roof there, uh, is just something I thought would be a kick to have, and I get people by here all the time, stop in the middle of the street, taking pictures, yelling at me. This place is so cool. I cannot believe this is your backyard. Oh yeah. Where did you get all of this stuff? The majority of it at swap meets. And you must have spent a fortune. I have no clue, and I really don't want to know, Rob. <laughs> don't add it up. No, no, it's, it's one of those things that, uh, it's here now, so I'm sharing it with people. That's, that's the key right there. I, I love sharing it with people. Now, what are some of your favorite things here? Can you pick one thing out? Well, the shell sign, the one up here hanging on the pole, that's from 1939. That's a, one of my favorite signs. I've got a gas pump in the garage. It's 1909. I believe that's probably one of my oldest objects here. I really like the signs up in the air, I guess, because they're big and bold and they make a statement. Yeah, they're everywhere. Sinclair and Philip 66, Sunoco. Yes. And Mark Reef, <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> thank you, you doing, so bro? much you for bet. showing us you this bet. fantastic place in Woodland. A joy to be here to take a walk down memory lane with you. On my road trips across Northern California, I have been amazed at the massive animal rescue operations that are driven by remarkable people who dedicate everything they do to protect the wonders of the wild. I'm whispering today because we're in Shingletown, California, and these are wild horses. I'm here with Diane Nelson, who is co-founder and runs the Wild Horse Sanctuary. Good to see you. Thank you for coming. We, of course, will move if they all start getting a little bit closer, <laughs> but this is unbelievable, the Wild Horse Sanctuary here that you run to protect wild horses. Tell me about it. Well, over 30 years ago, when the government first started catching wild horses, they, there were not enough people coming forward or even knew about the program, so at the end of one of our contracts to remove horses from the Modoc National Forest, 80 horses were going to be shot and buried, and that was just more than we could, could stomach, so we said we'll take them. I cannot believe we're standing this close to wild horses. They never underestimate the power of food. <laughs> If you tried to touch them, they would move away or, you know, like when we have to sort them to take the babies off, you see they truly are wild. Standing here talking to you, I can't help but think of the word sanctuary. That's what we try to be. I've had people say that it's as much a sanctuary for people too, though, because in today's hectic world, I think we all would like to be able to have a piece of life like they do, you know. 
some freedom to be themselves and just enough food. They're not looking for more, they just need enough. And I want to learn to rope and to ride and just ride your pony out there in the hills and we get to do it here with these guys. You must feel incredibly blessed. I do, I do. Um, I always loved horses and the idea that at this point in my life I'd be taking care of as many as I have. And, but I, I feel blessed to have people who care. Do I see tears in your eyes? <laughs> a little bit. Like you said, I feel blessed. I really do. I just have always loved them. I don't know why people have a passion for what they do, but I love history. I think about the pioneers, and sometimes I wish I had been able to be one of them. Well, I'll tell you here at the Wild Horse Sanctuary, you are a pioneer in oh, your own way. Thank you. Diane Nelson, thank you so much. Thank what a you. pleasure. This is so cool. I mean, they're just everywhere. They're right over there. We've just pulled off Highway 49, a scenic highway in California's gold country. Today, we're near San Andreas. And next time you come through this area, you might want to keep your eyes out for this huge gate because behind it, well, there's a hint. Rob, you're in elephant land now. You got that right. <laughs> this is amazing. This is Pat Derby, co-founder of Paws here. And this is an animal rescue operation in full swing. Yes, yes. Wanda came to us from Detroit Zoo. This is Wanda the elephant. Wanda the elephant. Wanda has suffered all of her life from really chronic foot problems. Problems. She was in a circus. She's, Wanda's had a rough life. And she puts her foot right up here. Yes. To have her foot worked on, which is one of the many things you do here when you rescue elephants right. from where? Where do you get all these rescued elephants? We're, we're contacted from all over the world. Right now we're working on an elephant who's alone in a zoo in Canada. Mm -hmm. Can we give him a treat? Sure. Good. Come on, Wanda. Hey, baby. Right there. <laughs> How cute. All right. Good girl, Wanda. You're a good girl. A hungry little thing. Well, you have nine elephants here yes. on your property right now. Right. So uh, there's a few more down the hill, is that right? Yes, we're going to go see them. All right, let's go see them now. <laughs> All right. And so, Pat, there's four more here eating bamboo. Yes. Tell me about these. These are African elephants, and let's toss the bamboo in. Toss it, okay. Right. So we stay further back from these. Right, yes. Um, oh, you see why? That trunk's pretty strong. Yes. Okay, we're going out to see Rebecca. I can't believe She's... we crossed the fence. <laughs> yeah. And you say you're like Rebecca's mom now. Yes, I'm her mom. Um, actually, they all treat me like mom. They And they understand there's a respect for me. They have an incredible respect for age. The matriarch is always the oldest. You get their unconditional love and support and trust. You said that it all begins with an elephant. Yes. Explain that to me. Well, I, I, from the moment I was born, I had a fascination with elephants. I think I'm part elephant. I don't know. <laughs> I know I'm most comfortable when I'm with them. Becky! Hello! I've brought you lunch. That's Mama's baby girl. Her tail's wagging just like a happy dog. <laughs> do you want some cherries? And this is something people can do, come out here and see the elephants. Right. We, um, 
we take them in here. Of course, we don't let them get this, this close. close. Yeah, so this is a treat. They're, they're so forgiving and they're so in the moment. It's their philosophy, I think, is I'm here. It's a beautiful day. I'm going to enjoy and savor every moment. What a lesson for life. Yeah, really. Wow. Rob on the Road is all about great road trips. Whether we're giving you an idea of somewhere you might want to go yourself or taking you somewhere that you may not be able to go, the bottom line is Rob on the Road is getting you on the road through KDIE. We'll see you next time right here on Rob on the Road. A leap of fate for you, huh? There was horses that were going to be killed, and we didn't want that to happen. Sometimes you can still smell the cookies she bakes here. Even now? Even now. Are you saying it's haunted? Oh, I don't know. <laughs> Let's get out. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> to order a DVD copy of this program, call 888-814-3923 or visit kvie.org slash viewfinder.